it's time for the B A Q A A the B A Q A. What you say? The B A Q A man. The B A Q A with Tiffany. The B A Q A A. Welcome to a Brown Ambition Question and Answer, where you have questions and we have some answers with a caveat. Mm. We're not your doctor. No, we're not your lawyer. No, no, no. we're not your financial advisor. No. <laughs> we're just Sorry. two smart brown girls with a little bit of advice that you're going to mm. add a little spice. I thought we were going gospel nice. with that, but you took it enough different. So I, I was wading in the water. I was right. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right, you want to go first or second? How you want to do it, Mansa? Ooh, we have lots of juicy questions. Did we tell them how to how to contact us? Brand Ambition Podcast on IG. Slide into our DM with your mm-hmm. money, your career, your business, your life questions, yes, relationships, whatever. As long as you don't sue us, we're down with it. Okay, <laughs> Green and give us like out. if you want us to give you an anonymous name, make it fun. Okay, like make it fun. well, then we got to go with number one. Then okay. our number this first one because their email is, or their so their name is Coco Loco. <laughs> Coco Loco <laughs> says, thank you, ladies, for your amazing work. I have a career question. I have a chemistry degree. And when I graduated, I went into teaching. I love the kids, but hated the system. After four years of teaching, I went back to work as a scientist. I love science. I had a mental breakdown before I decided to change my career. So I made a lot of changes since. Now I'm on top of my mental, physical, and emotional health. I work in an international pharmaceutical company. I see myself growing from the lab into business development and eventually the corporate suite. Some of the corporate suite, Mm C-suite, that stands for chief executive. That's fine. Uh, Some of the things I hear about corporate America are not good. Am I naive in pursuing a career to be part of the C-suite? Be blessed. Coco Loco. Coco Loco. I feel like I'm not going to be able to get over that name. I just love well, it. Coco Loco. Here's the thing: everybody don't hate the C-suite, right? Some people are built for it. You won't know until you try. It. Mandy gave me this really good piece of advice that I actually gave to one of my mentors the other day. I remember Mandy. I wanted to. I got an opportunity, and I wasn't sure if I was ready for it. I was really nervous. I said, I think I said something to the effect of like, I think I'm going to turn it down. And you said, don't turn down something that has not been fully offered to you yet oh yeah Maybe like like mm-hmm. see girl you they just said hey there's some interest you're like girl go to the interviews how much is it get all the information turn down the actual offer not the potential presentation of offer i was yeah, like the idea oh yeah that-, that was a really good piece of advice right and so i since then gave that advice to other people looking real smart i was like mm. As per yeah. my mentor, Mandy, she has see. I have not perfected that pop, but that was that was good. <laughs> that was I'm a good sink my teeth into that pop. Good. All right, well, keep going. So Coco Loco, first of all, I love that name. I would just say that there are, just like you discovered about the school system, some people thrive working in the public school, private school sector, whatever, and some people don't. You decided you didn't like it. So what did you do? Mm. You pivoted. You figured it out and you found another way to do the thing you love. Okay. So you're working at this company and, you know, and you're like, okay, I might want to pursue into, into the C-suite. You might get a few years in and realize it's not really for me, but you are smart. You will be able to pivot and then find a space that is for you. And so I don't want you to not do a thing because you heard somebody said maybe kind of sort of, it's like, well, don't say no to an offer that hasn't been offered to you. You know, if you're interested in it, it's like you, we are here yeah. to live life, to see a thing through. And then if you decide you want something else, you pivot to something else, you know? So that's my advice. Oh, I love that. I love mm-hmm. that I said that to you. I agree with myself. <laughs> 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 I see this all, all the time. And sometimes I'm an impatient person. I kind of want to get to the point when I do my coaching calls. I want to get to the nut because I can almost, I can smell the nut before people know what the nut is. You know what I mean? I and mean, I'm just like, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what that is. Get to the nut. I mean, girl, aren't we all? But hey, I it's, it's, I'm saying I'm a little too. Sometimes I'm just like impatient with the process, whatever process it is. Okay, it, it can translate to different areas of life, but in this context, Tiffany, stay with me. In the back of the class back there, um, the context is in your career. So when I'm talking to someone, I kind of can anticipate what is sort of holding them back, and so, and so often I have to like someone I'm speaking to is worrying about a problem that they actually don't have yet mm. or talking themselves out of an opportunity that they're just thinking of. And I'm like, this is again, let's, let's get the next job 
And mm. like the C-suite is maybe it's next year for you. Maybe it's, but for a lot of people, if you're working your way up, it's a while away. And yeah. honestly, I think a lot of people who shit on the C-suite have never been in it. Mm. And I know for sure, if you're speaking to a woman of color, it's very unlikely that we have, sadly, because mm. I think 7% of us even make it to that level. Okay. And I also think, it, you know, and it's coming from a place of love and, you know, care for one another that we sometimes are like, well, be cautious because it gets a lot harder for us when you talk about those upper ranks, you know, in corporate America. That's true. It's fact. But at a certain point, you have to decide, does this fit with my what kind of impact I want to make? Mm -hmm. And you may find that the impact that you're making, you know, at the level that you are now or the next level or the one after that isn't enough. And you want to have more control over the impact that the, your company has or who they're serving or what products they're doing. And the reality is that the higher up you go, you have more influence. You do have more power over the direction um, that the company can take. And I think there's a lot that we, there's a lot of reasons to want that type of power and influence. And I, I wish more of us were reaching for that because the story that's been so long, the story about it's challenging for us. We, you know, we walk into a room and they don't look like us and we have mm -hmm. to code switch and they make, you know, they don't take us seriously and all that. Maybe that is true in a lot of cases. It certainly has in the past, but we can be part of a different story and yes. someone else's story does not have to become our own. Ultimately, if we let someone else's fear become our fear, we're not really serving ourselves. I think it, it, you'd benefit a lot of people from, in their careers would benefit from learning how to hear someone else's fear, hear someone else's objections or their um, their judgment on an idea, on an industry, on a job itself. Learn how to like hear that, but then listen to your inner voice and let that be the loudest voice of all. Um, and I, I can't say enough how important it is going to be for you to get really to be able to go to this space internally where you look at where you want to go and make your peace with that yourself without thinking of the perceptions or what you've heard about it. Um, you can have that knowledge, collect that data, but if you're going to, you know, block your blessings because of it, then it's not worth it. You know, mm. it's not worth it and it's not going to do a service to you. And uh, you've already proven that you've made a huge pivot from yes. teaching into working in pharmaceutical industry. Like that's huge. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you're doing really great. And you're an ambitious person who wants to keep choosing, um, you know, even bigger goals than you may have had for yourself originally. Just keep doing that. You know, keep keep going in that direction and just trusting your gut and breaking whatever rules you think are out there. That could be stopping yeah. you. Don't be loco, Coco. Yeah. <laughs> well, she said she got her mental health under control. So, you know, no mas yeah, loco. Sweet love her. No, no mas loco. loco. We're going to take a quick break and come back with our second question. Pregunta, if you will. Mm -mm -mm. Un poquito espanol over here. Okay. Um, and we'll be right back. to be able to say the word stoked. Come back for that. <laughs> or maybe you will because you get to read this one. <laughs> and we're back in blacker than ever. Okay. This email comes from, oh my goodness, my friends don't be acting, they act like they don't know I'm, I'm uh, taping a podcast. Okay, this email comes from, oh, that's a very unique name. We're going to call you, um, what could we call her? I don't think she asked for an, 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 an alien. But I just feel she? like sometimes people don't realize, I'm like, girl, this is a very nay, unique nay. name. Nay, nay. Hey, <laughs> make you dip. <laughs> Watch me, Nene. Okay, Nene. Mm -hmm. All right, Nene says, Hey, Tiffany and Mandy, love your show and love everything you do for BIPOC women everywhere. I'm currently three fourths of the way through the interview process for a position at a company, and I'm stoked to work that she's stoked to work with. A bonus the new position allows her peace out of her toxic work environment and unsympathetic boss. Yay! At this point, I'm certain they will offer me the job since every person at the six interviews I've already com um, completed has mentioned that I am the only person who applied um, with this role with one critical skill experience um, that they want. Everyone, everything looks good, like smooth sailing, except for one thing. Okay, here's the other shoe drop. 
And the recruiter for this role has been so kind and communicative through this process. However, she keeps pressing me for a number I want for the salary. During the initial phone interview with her, I did the prescribed method of mentioning I didn't have enough information about the role to give a number and ask for the company's budget, which she happily shared. But since then, every time we talk on the phone, she presses for a hard dollar amount for me. The top end of the budget for this role does pay about $12,000 less than my current Role, and I'm a bit overqualified for the title. I have already told her that this, um, that the timing um, of a potential offer for this position may require me to walk away from a nice annual bonus of about ten thousand at my current role, which I would like to recruit as a signing bonus if possible. Should I tell her a number the next time we talk, or keep circling? Help! Thank you so much again, Nene. Watch me whip, whip, watch me nay nay. <laughs> I love this question so much because there's nuance to this piece of yeah. like advice that we hear all the time. There's so much nuance to do you give a number in an interview? And you're absolutely right. A lot of the advice says, including I've said it many times, you know, you don't want to give a number up front unless mm -hmm. I would say this situation that you're in is one of those great examples, a nuanced situation where I think mm -hmm. it makes sense to give a number. Why? Okay. Because I know why the recruiter's asking you, girl, you, you said it yourself, you're overqualified and they know you're overqualified and they're worried that you're going to be out of their price range. And if they're mm. not worried they're going to be out of their price range, they at least want to prepare, I think, for what it would take to snatch you up. You said that, you know, what you're, what you're looking for, it's like 12K under. The top end of the budget pays 12K less than where you're currently working and you're a bit overqualified for the title. This is one of those situations where I know it may not sound ideal, but I do think that you should be transparent saying exactly this. The current role, the top end of it is less than I'm currently making. How much wiggle room will there be in the budget for the salary? Because I it would be looking for, you know, an increase of, you know, a certain dollar amount or a certain percentage or just leave it there. Just to be frank, I know you've been asking for my salary expectations. Mm -hmm. I am really excited about this opportunity for multiple reasons. However, the salary that's posted right now, if that's if that's firm, that is going to be a sticking point for me because it is significantly less than what I am currently making. Um, and on top of that, I stand to lose $10,000 mm -hmm. in the form of an annual bonus if I walk away from the job at this point. Um, what, you know, can we talk about that? Do you have any insight into how flexible the budget is for this role? And then you kind of have to let them do their thing. Now, what I love about your situation is you're three quarters of the way through. They really like you. They love you, in fact. And mm -hmm. if they find out that you are more expensive than they thought, it sounds like you're in a situation where they may push for you, may fight for you, may advocate for you to get more. Mm -hmm. I've definitely done that. There's 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 definitely wiggle room um, mm -hmm. in a lot of cases, but it's do they feel like wiggling for you? Are yes. you worth a little wiggle? You know, we are you worth a little, a little wiggle? Um, and I, you know, at a certain point you do got to let them know, like, how much do I need to go ask for? How much more are we talking? Are we talking 10% more? Are we talking 12% more, 15%, anything more than 10%, they're probably going to need to get approvals from, um, you know, even a more senior team. So you have to take that into account. So you could say, you know, I would be looking to come in at 10%. Uh, ten percent more than what the high end of the budget currently says, and that can give them a sense of where they need to be at. You know, ballpark. The other side of this is I want to acknowledge that you say you're in a toxic work environment and you have an unsympathetic mm. boss, and I hate that for you. Yeah, that makes you a little less powerful as a negotiator. Just the reality is that you have you have more than just money on your mind. Yeah, which is natural and normal, and I think everyone should be negotiating and thinking about a new job in terms of. A lot more than just dollars and, ten and cents. Do you like the team? Are they going to give you more autonomy? Is, are you going to do you, your potential manager? Do they seem great? Because it may, you know, if they come back and they say the highest we can get it is like exactly what you're making right now. And it's a, you know, lateral pay move. Is it worth it for you to jump for that? Maybe for your mental health, it will be. And that's not necessarily what we hope for when we quit our way rich, but mm -hmm there's mental health too to take into account. And for me, being rich is a lot more than just dollars in the bank. Mm -hmm. So you'll have to, you know, consider that as well. But I, yeah, I do think at this stage in the interview, go to them and just be, 
like she's been super open and transparent with you. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great indication of how the company culture will be. But I would in return be transparent and upfront with her. You already know what the top of the budget is for the role. So like, let's get to this at this point. They don't want to lose you, but they need to know. And so do you. Yeah. How much more are we going to invest in each other if there's not going to be the budget that, you know, you need to make it worth your while? And I don't have too much more to add because not my forte, but as an employer myself, Mandy's absolutely right. You know, there have been people who I really wanted and I will look at the budget and talk to my CFO and talk to the money manager and say, and try to kind of figure out what my return on investment with this person, if they come in, like I'm literally going through this now where there's somebody that I want to bring on and, but they could potentially bring me back four or five times more than what I'd be paying. If not, honestly, way more than that. And so I'm talking to the team. Do we think it's worth, is the juice, juice worth the squeeze? Cause I wasn't anticipating paying them out of pocket, but they seem worth the risk. They seem worth mm. the investment of that money um, because I know that the return, if they do what they're supposed to do, and I've heard really good things about their service, that it's worth it, you know? And so, um, yeah, like, I mean, I don't know, like, uh, like what other interviews you kind of have left, but just, you know, continue to, I mean, you're already rocking out like, yo, I am worth it. Like, you know, you're not going to find another like me and certainly it might cost you a little more, but it'll cost you more than not have me. Yeah. You know, Cause that's really what it's standing. Like the woman that I'm wanting to hire for this role, if we don't get her, there's a loss to us. And as far as like, cause we're already losing money in one capacity of the business and I want to remedy the, that, you know, so it's not like if we don't get her, we stay even. No, if we don't get her, we actually continue to lose. So mm -hmm. not only is she plugging this hole, she's actually replenishing. And so that way, that's why to me, it's worth this extra cost. And so, and this is, you know, like, you know, we had a bad year last year, although this year is way, way, way better still, you know, I wasn't looking to hire anybody. So anyway, I say all that to say that people will make a way if you seem like, you know, the, the return on investment is going to be worth it. So. Yeah, yeah, but good luck to you. Um, what was it, Nene? Nene. -ne? Ne -ne. Yes, we want to see you whip <laughs> and Nene, -ne, honey. And if you want us to answer your questions on the B of the QA, you have questions about business, personal finance, your career, even just your life, honey, because, you know, we know some things or two. Um, come in and slide into our IG DMs. Um, if you want to be super old school, you can email us at um, brownambitionpodcast at gmail.com. But the IG DMs are a little bit easy. We're Brown Ambition Podcast on the I of the G. Um, and make sure that you leave a review. Shoo up. We should have a review mm. song. Do, do, do. Shoo up. Leave a review. Boob up. Shoo up. That? <laughs> leave a review. Like Beyonce, Share. Tiffany has no genre that she will not <laughs> try. Leave a review. Share our episodes because you know it's good, honey. Did you be shopping? Stop me on the street, harassing me with hugs to give to Mandy, knowing dang on what I don't like hugs. So you're listening, you're listening, and then when I when I stand next to you, tell me how much you love the show. Your girlfriend stand next to you, like what show? Shame, shame on Poor you. Shame. Why should Man, she say what show when you over here giving out hugs for two people to one person? Don't do that. If you can share a hug, you can share the show. <laughs> Uh, no, but okay, seriously, though, like we love Brown Ambition. We know that you love Brown Ambition. So tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend so we can continue to grow. I am. Oh, I love this review. Let me read one from January. Okay, okay. From uh, Vaughn. Vaughn says, okay. both of you are inspirational, beautiful, smart women. Dang it, this thing keeps shaking. All right, from listener Vaughn says, both of you are inspirational, beautiful, smart women. I have been going through depression and anxiety mm. for a few years. I was so unsure of my life goals and how to maneuver this world. Your authenticity has helped me understand how to love me. Thank you mm. so much. And I look forward to hearing every week's episode. If Va mm. or Vaughn, that oh, is a, that I is love that. special. It is. Thank you want to do you. one more before we jump off? Oh, I could. I mean, we got 2,300, but we can have <laughs> three more. <laughs> Well, we, yeah. we can still use more. We can still use more. Let's do one more. <laughs> then we're going to jump yeah. off. See, this could be you, us reading your good stuff. Uh, <laughs> okay. Desi Desi says in January, this is such a great podcast. I truly enjoy the energy and information Mandy and Tiffany provide. See, it could be something cute and sweet like some, that. Some cute. Just we'll leave take it. it all. <laughs> it could be an emoji. Give us an emoji and a five-star review. And you know what? It's all golden. Yes. Also, her name on, on iTunes says, share with a friend. So I love clearly that. they listen. She's like, yes. okay, I'm leaving you. <laughs> you 
All right, y'all. We will chat with you next week. Thank you for listening as always. Bye. Bye, BA fam.